You know, the crazy thing is, if Donald Trump got into office, which he won't, he'd probably be okay with this. I'm Brendan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, we got another crazy premise on our hands coming with the purge election year. This is the third chapter in the purge series. I saw the first one. I saw the second one. And of course, we're here to talk about number three, the third one election year. Now, all three of these films have been directed and written by the same person. They're also distributed by the same production company, which is Platinum Dunes. That's Michael Bay's. A small production company if you don't know his name of course he did the Transformers movies bad boys 1 and 2 he also did the rock and Armageddon and Pearl Harbor and the island and 13 hours secret soldiers of Benghazi or secret war Benghazi he also did pain and gain you know it's kind of all over the place you know I like the guy but you know as a director you know he needs a leash um, but he is behind the production company uh, he is behind the production of this film here and also it's platinum dunes and when i was looking it up on imdb they actually have produced all of these films and uh platinum dunes is they usually make extremely cheap horror films and dump them off in january and february and they make a profit a profit a profit from them but the, the, the guy that directed this film his name is james demonico he wrote and directed the first second and third and i absolutely hated the first movie I thought it was completely dumb. Characters were just making decisions left and right that just didn't make any logical sense. Um, I mean, I thought it was a great plot, a great premise, the purge, you know, it's legal to kill people for 12 hours. No, I don't want that to happen in real life, but in a fake fictional world, I wanted to see that on the big screen. And I didn't see it on the big screen. I rented it before I watched Purge 2 Anarchy at home. And I hated um, the first Purge, but Frank Grillo came back in part two with, uh, I'm going to say Pain and Game, with The Purge, Anarchy. And I was about to say I love that film, but I didn't love it, but I did like it a lot. I don't own it, but if I were to catch it, you know, for a few dollars or, you know, for a reasonable price at Walmart or your local bargain bin store or wherever. Are there even local bargain bin stores? Well, anyway, I, I would buy and I really did like um the purge anarchy because it took the characters and put them in a completely different position than it was in the first film they wasn't confined to the house they were able to run around in the city and they had to you know hide and attack and do all these types of things and it was really entertaining it had a nice human uh, touch to it at the end with uh, regarding morals and you know I thought it was a pretty good film I, I really did enjoy it so purge election year is coming out I'm seeing all the trailers I'm looking around just like, oh my gosh, I mean, they're just taking this to a whole nother level um, just with the psyche of the American people and how freaking nuts they possibly can be. Because in the trailers, I, you know, I don't watch trailers too much anymore because I feel that they do spoil the movie. And I find that in myself that I enjoy a film a lot more if I go in with as little as possible uh, by seeing less trailers. But the trailers that I did see, I was, I was already, you know, engaged the first one I saw. And they just was putting this religious twist on the film. And it just really seemed eerie and uncomfortable. And I'll go ahead and say now that now I'll kind of jump to the end of my review is I did enjoy that in, t in the film. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. But let's start at the beginning for the Purge election year. And I was going in with this with mediocre expectations. This didn't make any top 10, 20 or possibly even top 50 year top 50 most anticipated films that I want to see of the year uh, but I wasn't I wasn't like you know you know slagging along drugging out to the movie theater I thought it was gonna be pretty good I liked the last one I you know I was just going hey I just want to see some people kill other people in a nice creative way and I like the fact that this senator um, is just trying to get rid of it. She's trying to abolish it. She's like, this is corrupting the people. You know, we, we need to get out of there. And then you got the, the newfound fathers. They're like, no, we like being on top. And, you know, not nothing's going to change. And they're trying to execute them uh, with Frank Grillo at the helm being the secret. Well, he's not really secret service, but he is her bodyguard. 
So I was going in, I was looking forward to it, and I really, um, you know, thinking I was going to have a good time. And the beginning of the film, I really did like it. They really did paint the picture uh, for the senator on why she feels the way she feels, why she's taking such a strong stance against the purge. I mean, they did that well. As soon as the film started off, you're kind of at the edge of your seats. It's full of tension. You don't know how the scene is going to play out. You know, and it was really good, and it's getting you on board. And then, you know, the the film continues on. And what I'm liking about the film is this actor named McKelty Williamson. And that name probably doesn't ring a bell for you, but I know you know him. He was in Con Air, uh, talking about Cyrus the Damn Virus. He was in a few other movies, but he was Bubba Blue in the Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, Bubba Blue. Bubba Gump, all that good stuff. You know, he is in this movie. Uh, he played a pretty important role, and I liked him. He was the comedy relief in this film. I've seen him dib and dab in a few other films here and there besides Connor and Forrest Gump, but um, it's just beyond me right now. But um, he was one of the main uh, protagonists in this film that, you know, you're on his side. You want him to live throughout the movie. You want him to beat the Persian Knight. And I liked him. And everything that had to do with him and the world that surrounded him, you got a real sense of home and love where he comes from. And it was just really easy to get on board with uh, him, himself, and the surrounding characters. Um, the, the film really did a great job of making you feel for him and his little side story or subplot. Now, a little bit later, they did try, they did get a little sobby, a little too much for my taste, but overall, you know, I liked him. We had to stick with him and a few other characters throughout the whole duration of the film, and I'm glad to say that for the most part, I liked his character. He didn't do much to piss me off. But of course, you also have Frank Grillo, and he's the, the lead protagonist, the hero, the guy that you don't want to mess with that's going to blow your head off if you try to come and get his senator. And he's cool. I liked him in the last one. I liked him in this one. He didn't do anything much more than the last film, but, you know, he held his own, and, you know, I was, I was on his team, too. You know, and it's really sad because it was a really good setup with how they brought this film together. And when the purge starts and you actually want to see all the carnage and the mayhem and the destruction, or you want to see the bad guys chasing the good guys and the good guys having to get away, it took a while for that to come to fruition. They wanted to expand on another subplot that they uh, set up earlier. And at first I was kind of wondering what the hell is going on, but then there was a small reveal and you're like, oh, okay, I like how the film is circling it back around with this little plot point here. But then they just went completely off the rails, head first into a pool with no water, with their head tie behind, tie behind their uh, back. And I just didn't understand why the film went this way. And then they did get back on course, but it was horrible. Let's just say that in the first third of this film, they tried to set up a small mini villain. And my take, my opinion, that small mini villain in the first third of this movie was absolutely horrible. It was just ridiculous. I mean, you could have grabbed anyone off the streets and they could have put together a better acting performance than these two ladies here. But it was bad. It was laughably bad. And it was a distraction. Um, it's the beginning of the purge. And what they're supposed to be doing is just, you know, letting the audience know, just like, you know, hey, you're in for a nice thrill ride. But you know, no, it was a horrible introduction to The Purge, and I just wasn't feeling it, and, you know, the film just moves on, and it moves on more and more and more, and then you're just sitting there, and then you're sitting there more and more, and then you're just realizing, okay, nothing is happening. You like the characters, you like the setup, but actually nothing is happening. Somewhere in Hollywood, another executive or somebody was like, hey, Let's make another Purge movie, a movie with people killing people for no reason, but no one is killing anyone. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm just like, why have we been here for 20, 30 minutes and I haven't seen anyone's head being blown off? I mean, that may sound sick to you, but that's the point of the movie and no one is doing it. Now, it finally does come and people start blowing off heads, but it's sprinkled here and there randomly. And, you know, when it pops, it pops at you. And when I say pop, you know, there was actually a jump scare that popped at you before things just, you know, the shit hit the fan. And I like that because I'm really not a fan of jump scares, but there was one that landed very well in the beginning of the film. But going back to what I was just saying, I'm 
I'm just sitting there watching and I'm just saying, okay, nothing's happening. Then something would happen. It would be nice is, is exactly what you came to see the movie for, but it just dips off again into another boring zone. And it does that about three or four times to where you're just sitting there and you're like, man, this movie is boring. I mean, I don't understand how you have a movie with about people killing people, but no one's killing anyone. I just don't understand. And you, you know, you have to use your brain too. The, the smart, logical thing to do is if, if murder is legal for 12 hours and emergencies and police and firemen, you know, they're, they're out of there for 12 hours, the smart thing would to do is just hide underground or duck cover or just not be in the streets, you know, making noise for no reason. And I kind of like how at the very beginning of the film, they kind of gave a small semi-valid reason why a normal person would go out into the purge. But the person had to make the decision like, hey, you know, um, I don't have the protection that I had before. So if I don't protect what's mine, I'm going to lose it. And this is all I have left. You know, I may die, but if I lose this establishment, I, I'm going to die a little inside anyway. I like that. That's cool. That's giving depth to the character. But don't have that character make a dumbass decision five seconds after that. If he wants to protect this establishment, be smart about it. Let's hide in darkness and not stand on a rooftop, you know, waving your gun in the air, looking around, making threats where everybody can see you. If someone is walking by or driving by, be quiet and let them go by. Don't bring any attention to yourself. So that's just besides the movie being boring a little bit. And then, you know, you have characters here and there that are just making dumb decisions. It's just bringing the film down just a little bit more and more and more. But then we go on and on and let's get to the writing or the story. Literally in the middle of this movie, it is so blatantly obvious that you can tell that the director, James DeMonaco, ran out of a plot. He just ran out of stuff to do. So he had to just come up with a dumb reason to throw the good guys back into the fray, back into the purge. And then you find out that it was completely unnecessary for him to do that because he came back around with the smart way to give the film a reason to continue on. So it went left again, but it came back and it got on course, but it's just another reason to bring, bring the film down. But the film kept doing that. If I wanted to just call this a, a, a movie, I would feel more comfortable calling it a roller coaster because it started real good with character depth, motivation, and just making you care about what's going on. But, you know, it gets boring, but then it comes back up. And then the character does something stupid, and it goes back down, and you get some action, it comes back up. And it just does that until the very end to where you get a, you know, a semi-good climax but it's just nothing running out of the theater to where you have to say, hey, you need to go see this movie. But I was talking about what was so sick and disgusting towards the beginning of this review. And again, it's just the psyche of the people. They put a, like, a horrible religious twist on how people try to, you know, um, switch up the, the good book or the word. And oh, God said that it's OK to kill people and this and that. And it was just just like, oh, my gosh. I mean, like, I hope that this country in a billion years from now, however however long everybody here, that this just never happens because this is disgusting. Persia 1 and Persia 2, of course, they had people killing everybody, but it was just the mindset of these people in this church that just, they just knew they were right, but they were just so wrong with this, just, just it, it was just disgusting, and I, I hope this never comes true. Now, out of all three purges, part two is my favorite, uh, the election year is my second favorite in part one. I absolutely hated that movie. So I still I like Purge Anarchy better than Purge Election Year. It's nothing that you have to go run out and see, of course, and you probably already know that. But if you're just bored and you're an average movie goer and you want something to see that's just not horrible to kill some time, hey, go see it at a matinee price. So if I had to rate the Purge Election out of a one out of ten, I would give it a six out of ten. Yes a six out of ten but guys that's just my opinion have you seen the purge election do you want to see it have i turned you on have i turned you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me the thumbs up and if you didn't like this video that's fine just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up 
since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you become one of my subscribers and get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. Also, if you want to find me on any other platforms, you can. You can go over to the website, find a written review of this that's at the bottom of the screen, or any other social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter, at just my opinion 84 And guys, share the video. I promise you I will not get mad if you share the video. If you share it, I promise I'll keep it between me and you. But anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in for my opinion slash review for the purge election year. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.